Hello, welcome everybody. This is going to be my manga collection for the year 2018, pretty much 2019 at this point, right? But before we get into this video, I just want to preface this by saying this is a different kind of manga collection. I don't think anyone's really done it like this. I just wanted to put my own take on it. It's a lot of editing, a lot of random uh, clips in there and whatnot, uh, showing you prices, showing you uh, having text on the side, maybe some useful information. I just wanted to make my video, you know, this is how I wanted this video to be. It might not be the best way to do this video, it's just my take on it. And I wanted mine to be different, unique in a way, and just um, wanted to be special. So hope you guys enjoy, um, you guys have a great day, and hope you guys like the video. Later. I really don't have space any other way. Honestly, I only have two bookshelves, so I have to double stack them. So let's get into it. So first we have these uh, these Full Metal Alchemist uh, Full Metal Editions. I think this is one of the best releases this year. I'm really, really enjoying these. I sold off my singles because I want to collect them in this edition. Really, really great. The only thing, if you can see there, is the chipping. I believe that has to do with heat. I left it in the car for a little bit, and it's it's sort of hot here. And then I just touched it, and it was flaking off. But I have heard from other people that it's happening to them as well. So be wary for that. But other than that, these are amazing. I love them. Rereading Full Metal Alchemist uh, gives me much more appreciation for her as a mangaka. Amazing stuff. We have JoJo's. We have the first part complete. Second part, uh, just the first two volumes. Uh, they're, they're coming in. I, I have a, a right stuff order. So don't don't be scared. Don't, don't be mad. More JoJo's is on, the way, is on its way. JoJo's is amazing. It's kooky. It's wacky. It's very clever, very witty, and I I very enjoy I enjoy JoJo's a lot. It's a lot of fun. We have a uh, Stardust Crusaders five, seven, and eight simply because those were cheap at the time, and I have one to three or four coming in. So I cannot wait. We have Sunny Volume One by uh, Tayo Matsumoto. I believe this is the creator of um, Man. I'm forgetting the name of it, but it'll be on the screen. I know what I'm talking about. He created that, and he created something else as well. All right, I need to change the gear right there. Hopefully you like that little sound effect. But I feel like I really, really just disrespected how much of a master this mangaka was. I don't know how many times I'm going to do this, just kind of glaze over them. But it, it's insane. He's done so much good work. Good works. Uh, Tech on King Street, uh, Ping Pong, the animation. I love the fucking uh, actual anime for that. One of my favorite animes of all time. I'll leave you guys with a clip here just to know like the level that this guy's at. He's amazing. Highly recommend checking him out. few moments later as well it was a really good first volume his art style is very unique that is for sure it carries over from his other works and i really enjoyed it they're, they're quite expensive but i believe there's only six of them and next year that will be a priority to get this year i have other things battle royale ultimate edition this, this is i believe a three in one and the first three are relatively cheap you can get them on right stuff for about ten dollars each and four and five are insanely expensive and hard to get but eventually, I will look into getting those. We have uh, Blade of the Immortal. These are the omnibuses. The singles are out of print. The omnibuses are pretty good. They look really nice. But then if you can see there, if you can see that crease in the spine, that is typical of uh, Dark Horse. Pretty shitty when it comes to spines. But that is 1 to 4. Currently, we are at Volume 7, and I do have it coming in. But sadly... Sadly, when you order off right stuff during these big, big, um, whether it be winter or um, Thanksgiving like specials, they 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 get a lot of orders. So usually they take like two weeks to a month to get to you. Die War Gilder, uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I believe Volume Two should be coming out or is coming out already. I'm not sure. It gets delayed all the time. But uh, definitely. Oh, I didn't really say much about the series of Blade of the Immortal. It's really, really good. The historical aspect, I really like it. I like the time it's set, and they do a lot to... Um, it's, a, it's a lot of politics, and a lot of uh, history does come into it. My problem with it is it, it seems rather bad in the beginning, simply because 
the main character, he's essentially immortal, obviously, and I feel like he relies too much on that as a clutch to win, as his crutch. Like, oh, a lot of the times he's winning simply because he catches the foe off guard because he's immortal. And I, I didn't like that because it felt like, um, felt very unskilled. Like, the only reason he was winning because of the element of surprise. But it gets better later on, and um, I really like the dynamic between the two characters and the, the side characters. Each side character that's on the spine right here has been really, really strong. She's been really a really great character, and he's been a very unique and um, char different character in himself. And what I like about this series is every character is fleshed out, and they feel like an actual person. No one's uh, like a stand-up cardboard copy, like, oh, I'm doing this because... Because that, that is what my character needs to do. It is because they're a person and they have their own motivations. So I've been, I talked too much about that. But let's move on. Uh, Saturn Apartments 1 to 7. Um, I really need to get a different copy of Volume 7. Uh, but amazing story. Beautiful. Very sad. But very, uh, I want to say it is, it's depressing, but it's also heartwarming at the same time. Uh, but that's life, you know. You, you, there's ups and downs. And this series is definitely one you should check out. It's one of my favorite series, probably of all time. It's probably my top 20 list, but um, very, very great read. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, they're out of print, sadly. I think volume 3 and 4 are pretty expensive. But if you can find them on eBay, like the whole series, a lot. I remember that one went for like $50. You have to jump on that. Ran in the Grey World, uh, very, very promising. I really enjoyed it. The art style is amazing. I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, very different, but it's it's very beautiful. The art style is insane, and I can't wait to see more of this. So that was the first shelf, guys. Five minutes. That is not good. We need to go faster. So let's go ahead and move these all and uh, go to the next part. When we're talking about Shonen, we're really not going to say much. So you guys, you guys understand. It's One Punch Man. It's, it's fucking uh, My Hero Academia. What is there to say that hasn't already been said? So let's move on to the next part. So believe it! 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 So my shonen, most of my shonen stacked up uh, from bottom to top, from down to up. I don't know how to say it. Um, it's not horizontal, it's vertical because there's too much of it and it takes too much space. So let's get into it. We have One Punch Man Volume 1 to 14 that is up to date. It's insane how far we've come with One Punch Man. Uh, there's already 14 volumes, 15th volume coming out next year. One Punch Man, I can't say anything that hasn't already been said. It's great. It's um, different. It's a, The characters are all unique. They're badass. The art is one of the best. You know, Murata is the greatest, one of the greatest manga artists to have ever lived. I still think um, um, Inuoi, Takeshi Inuoi is better, but fucking Murata is amazing. You, when you're comparing him to Takahiko Inoue, like, you already know, he's in a fucking league of his own. So, Mob Psycho Volume 1, I'm very happy that we're getting that. Sadly, Viz couldn't get the license, so uh, Dark Horse got it, and it's now they don't line up nice, but whatever. We have uh, My Hero Academia, Volume 1 to 5, and this is when I took a break from collecting, so I came back around Volume 13. That is why there's a big gap, and I haven't really been wanting to... Um, reread it so when i do get the feeling of rereading um the urge to reread my hero academia i'll for sure buy those volumes in the middle but not in a hurry now my hero academia is not going anywhere vigilantes really really enjoyed it i'm liking it more than the actual main series dr stone i'm absolutely loving it i'm reading it online now with the shonen app demon slayer one to three it's pretty good i don't think it is uh as good as everyone says as of yet and then promise neverland volume seven i let my friend borrow one to six and sadly, we won't have it for these, this video. Let's uh, move this shit so that uh, we can get a good look at that. So we have... Um, get out of here. We have uh, World Trigger Volumes 1 to 18. Missing uh, like 6 in between. I wasn't collecting it because it went on hiatus. And now it's not. So I'll, I'll get it again. But I love World Trigger. Best strategy shown in ever. The fights are insane. And then we have uh, Dimension W, which we have more over here. Uh, one to seven and two copies of uh, one and two. I will be giving those away in the future. So this is all like the current shonen stuff. Uh, I don't think Dimension W is a shonen, but uh, the current stuff that's being released at the moment that I'm keeping up with. If you can, if you notice, there is no Food Wars. There is no Seven Deadly Sins. I personally don't like those series anymore. And uh, Moggy's down below. So that's pretty much all the the current shit that I'm reading, and it's it's really good. This is my 
Shonen, I can only read so much Shonen, so I try to pick the best or what I like, at least. What, uh, what is uh, more in line with my taste and my preferences, and these, these are it. So let's go on the next shelf, guys. Alright guys, we are back with part 2 of my manga collection video and thank you so much for giving me so much support. I, le I left a sneak peek of what this video is going to look like and everyone was giving nothing but love. So let's get into it and everyone was reassuring me that like don't, don't like pay attention to the time limit. Like the time, uh, just talk about it. So let's let's talk about it. So right here, this is probably my favorite shelf right now. We'll give you an overview. You guys know Naoki Urasawa is the man, and I am honestly a little disgraced. A little, I feel a little um, ashamed of my current state of Naoki Urasawa. The only completed work I own by him is Monster, and I don't even have it all in these uh, nice perfect editions. I have. Uh, these nice, really nice singles, but I'm missing volumes 2 and 3. I really need to get into that. Um, I'm not worried about picking it up simply because I have the content right here. If I ever want to read Monster, I can read it all the way through. And oh, okay. But as you guys know, Naoki Urasawa, if you've never read him, I would recommend just dropping this video right now, going on Amazon and either buying uh, a, mo a perfect edition of Monster or a perfect edition of 20th Century Boys. Honestly, I'm reading 20th Centuries right now for the first time and um, in these perfect editions. Again, there's only two out as of the making of this video. I don't know when you're watching this in the future, there might be more. But this is so fucking good. I highly recommend 20th Century Boys or Monster either or. If you want to read one that you can buy all of already, then Monster and then 20th Century Boys, you can get them in these uh, singles. I actually have one right here. Let me show you guys. So there's the the singles. I have one, and I just sort of ruined that. So there's that. But these are so nice. And I would highly recommend just going with that so you can read it as it's coming out. Really cool. You got to be part of the experience on the manga community. We're all reading them right now. It's the, We're really... I'm loving it. It's amazing. It's about, like, essentially... <laughs> it's hard to describe. It's like cults and um lost memories and essentially the the main purpose is if your younger self could look at you now would you be the hero you always wanted to be that is the theme of the story and it's really 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 true just think about that like the younger you would would he be would he be um happy with how he turned out and then there's a lot of stuff going on. Master Kiyotan, another great work. I really love this. This is more of like a uh, action thriller. And then um, think of like Indiana Jones meets uh, martial artist. And um, really, really cool detective type, type stuff. Really fun. Really um, a lot of history and a lot of actual facts in there. That uh, This could actually be... Read this and you actually will learn. You will learn shit. Uh, Monster, it is one of the greatest uh, thriller drama stories out there. It's all like messed up now, but it is amazing. It is a heartfelt story of uh, people coming together and uh, dealing with sin, dealing with um, dealing a lot with revenge, knowing that uh, the cycle of revenge will just continue to go if you continue to uh, partake in it. And the only way to stop this cycle is to remove yourself from it. Or you lose yourself to the demon. Really great story. Naoki Urasawa is one of my favorite mangakas of all time, if not my favorite. And right next to it, we have one of my favorite mangakas of all time, if not my favorite, Spirit Circle and Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. We have them right there. Sadly, this is now out of print. I was, I was fucking yelling from my rooftops for years for people to get on this series. And now it's out of print. And it's great. I recommend reading it online. But do not buy it because I think everything else you can get. But this volume right here is like 50 to $100. Ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous. But it's a great series. Um, an another series is very hard to describe simply because it's, it's very weird. But at the end of the day, it's just a story about a kid who's a coming of age in a way. He's always sort of been a recluse. He has some problems um, mainly with his grandpa that he has to get over. 
and him falling in love and uh, acquiring the strength to really fight for what he loves. And then Spirit Circle, which is in print. It's Right now we're at Volume 5, and I'd highly recommend it. It ends at Volume 6, so I actually don't know how the story ends, but as of now, it's been amazing. It's been great. It's a story of uh, past lives and how uh, one boy is trying to make amends for all of his mistakes in all his different reincarnations. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Is it better than Spirit than Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer? I don't know. People say it is. I personally think they're both amazing, and I would have to read Spirit Circle, I mean, Lucifer again, to judge it, and I don't even know how Spirit Circle ends yet. So that is this shelf. Yeah, this is one of my favorite shelves in my whole collection. This is my favorite shit. Um, it's my favorite shelf, but again, I feel ashamed because I need more Naoki Urasawa. Next year, for sure, I'll have all of Naoki Urasawa that's released in English. And um, so far, I have everything released by one of my favorite mangas of all time. And yeah, guys, so... Move on to the next one, and yeah, let's go to the let's go to what's behind it, guys. All right, guys, let's move on to what lies behind. So right here we have Your Lie in April, which again I've said is one of my favorite stories of all time. Um, it's made me cry on multiple occasions. I'm already getting choked up just th just talking about. It. Sorry about that. I had a had a burp, but um, yeah, the thing with Your Lie in April is it is a much better anime than it is a manga. I would still highly recommend it, but the only reason I really picked this up is simply because I wanted to support the series in any way I could. And buying the anime would be pretty dumb because I don't I don't have an anime collection. So I don't I don't see the point in doing that. So I just thought, hey, there's manga, it's released in English, I'll buy it. I think there's a total of eleven volumes, so I still need to buy the rest. I've I've been on volume nine forever now, and um the the reason why I haven't bought it is simply because I've watched the anime two or three times now, so I'm like, I know everything that happens to a key, but I should still have it just to make the collection look complete, but one of these days, maybe when they're on sale, but Your Lie in April, if you don't already know about this series, I'd highly recommend just watching the anime, it's an amazing uh, love story, coming of age story uh, of um, two musicians, and obviously the, the friends around them, it's just one of the most beautiful stories I've ever had the honor of... Um, enjoying partaking in be just because of the heartfelt moments there there are some people on the internet that like to say it's it's very um predictable but no shit that's the whole point is you see it coming but no matter no matter it's like you see the the truck that's about to fucking hit you you see it one street down but that's not the point the point is your your legs are tied to the ground you're like cemented into the ground so you see that shit coming and you know it's coming, but it still fucking hurts, you know? And that's why this story is so beautiful and the characters evolving and whatnot. Them growing and at the end, they just add a nice little bow, like a deus ex machina moment at the end, how they, they tie it up to the beginning. Um, it, it's not as, um, as how would I say it, random, but it, it makes sense. But it's just something they kind of tie in. Deus ex machina essentially means like... Um, they just throw one piece of information that was kind of never, um, there's no way of predicting it and it ties it together, but there's no way you could have seen that coming. It's just a cop out essentially, but in this way, it, it actually, in, in this series, it, it makes sense. Then we have A Silent Voice 1-7. to I'd highly recommend getting the box set for that. A beautiful series, two beautiful series right next to each other. This is This is a beautiful row. It's a story about a young girl and uh, her struggle with being deaf and being um, ridiculed and made fun of by a particular boy. And uh, and then it's his struggle with overcoming the fact that he was a fucking asshole and trying to, you know, gain her um, friendship after he was such a dick. But it's, it's a really beautiful story. Highly recommend it. Then we have Yona the Dawn 1 and 2. I can't talk much about that series. Um, it was pretty good. I've heard a lot of great things about it, but I never really read more, so let's gloss over that. Magi. Bum, 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 ba -dum, bum, bum. I'm gonna actually put some cool music there <laughs> instead of you guys having to listen to my shit soundtrack. But uh, yeah, Magi 1 to 33. One of the greatest ma shonen mangas to have been released in the past uh, probably 10 years. I would put it up there. It's not as good as Fullmetal Alchemist. It is a little bit lower than that, but it's better than Naruto. It's better than Bleach. 
can't really talk about One Piece without starting a riot, but uh, the whole world is beautiful. The characters are insane, insanely different, insanely unique. Uh, they all have their own motives and motivations. All the same thing, right? And uh, different characters. Everything feels so real, and this world feels so vibrant and so beautiful. The art's amazing. The battles are crazy. The fight scenes are um, intense. The magic system is a bit arbitrary, where there is no um, set power system in a way. Like, there's a power system, but there is no... Um, power graph in a way like you don't really see how people are getting stronger they just sort of do and this person's stronger than this person just because they kind of are but i uh, don't really really let that take away from the series it's beautiful it's a great it's a, it's a great story and i can't wait to finish it and again they have some of the best spines in the business and best covers in the business i'll leave some on the screen right now because i'm not going to pull one out then we have uh, madoka magica one to three that is i believe everything of the anime the first season at least i've only read the first volume it was pretty good um, I still need to read it. And over here we have Ancient Magus Bride. A beautiful, beautiful story. Let's take it out of the darkness. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. It's a very Ghibli-esque. It deals with a lot of really fucked up and uh, fucked up scenarios. And deals with like some very, uh, not touchy, touchy subjects. Some real subjects like slavery and uh, suicide and the will to live. It, it's, it's a very deep story. So, talks about some very strong subject matter. And at the same time, it's very beautiful. The art style's amazing. It reminds me of a Ghibli movie. Highly recommend it. I only have volumes 1 to 5, and I need to get more. So, that was that shelf, guys. Let's move on to the next. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Moving on to the next shelf, this is where a lot of my one-shots are. So, and a lot of my, um, very sadder series, more depressing series in a way. So, starting off, we have Maiden Abyss. I always say Maiden the Abyss, but it's Maiden Abyss. This is a series that had a huge anime, and that is the main reason why I picked it up. The art style is actually really, really amazing, very different. I say this about all of a lot of series, but... Uh, there, there's some series that the art style is just super unique, and that usually does it for me. I've only read the first volume of this. I really liked it, and I heard some some shit happens later on. I just really haven't gotten into it. As of recently, there's just been a lot of things coming up, and um, a lot of manga that I've been reading, rereading. There's series that I really shouldn't be rereading for the third time over. Like, right now, I'm rereading Hunter x Hunter. So it's like, why am I rereading these series when I could be reading a series that I really need to read, but... My philosophy on that is just, or my ideology on that is, uh, read what you want to read. You know, eventually you'll get to this. It's not like it's going anywhere. Eventually, you know, if right now in the moment I really want to read Hunter x Hunter, fucking read Hunter x Hunter. Uh, DDD Demons uh, Destruction. DDD Dead Demons DDD Destruction. I've heard so much, so many great things about th this series. It's by Inio Sano. This is all my Inio Sano works right here. I don't have much. I've The only one that I've actually completed um, and read online is a uh, good night pun pun. I liked it. Um, but again, this always happens with me is I, I'll read a series and, uh, online and then I'll kind of lose that urgency, that motivation to buy it physically. Uh, what I can say about these is they're very expensive, but they're very, very great quality. I haven't gotten, gotten started to read them yet, to reading them yet, but, uh, it's Inio Sano. I know what I can expect. I know it's going to be great, but I know it's also going to be pretty fucking depressing, like Solanin, Good Night Pun Pun, great. If you want to read um, a series with characters that feel very raw and real with um, interactions and moments that are very, very depressing at times, but at the same time, very real because life can get a little dark, can get a little scary, but that is the point of life is to uh, get through the... Sh I know it's it sounds a little like... Uh, pseudo pseudo intellectual is that the struggle but it is when life becomes a struggle uh what's the reason to keep going life itself because when you get through that struggle at the end of the day the rest of your life is a culmination of you surpassing that struggle and life becomes better so um <laughs> went off on a tangent there but uh very um there's some works that really make you look at life differently 
So we have Uzumaki and Frankenstein, but only Juji Ito works. I've had another another one before, Fragments of Horror. I like Juji Ito. I think um, the art style is amazing. Another thing, the aesthetic behind Juji Ito is mainly the reason why I collect them. I really like these two, and I really need to get more just because Juji Ito is this huge thing that I think we all need in our collection. Need a little bit, but I like to have all of it. Lychee Light Club, I did a video about this, so instead of talking about it, how about you go watch that video, it's like four minutes, but if you don't want to watch it, it's amazing, it's very dark, very gritty, very horrifying at times, and um, if you don't like gore or sexual content, you know, it's not for you. Pop Team, Pop Team Epic uh, 1 and 2, I haven't read the second one yet, I just got this a few weeks ago, I believe, but the first one was pretty fucking funny, very crude, and I'd... They're expensive, and they're super thin, but they honestly made me laugh. When I bought the first one, I actually bought it by accident, and I was like, alright, if this can actually make me laugh a couple times, like, I'll buy the next one. And it did. There are some moments that are pretty fucking funny, but um, the reason why it's probably not as funny as it should be to me is that it's a lot of um, Japanese and, like, anime... Um, anime jokes, in a way, where, like, you have to really know... Um, the references, there we go. There's a lot of Japanese references in it, like pop culture, and that doesn't always transfer over to, you know, obviously it doesn't. Pop culture in Japan and in the uh, United States is very different. You know, over here you can be making fun of the Kardashians, and over there they're like, who the fuck are the Kardashians? And everyone in the United States knows who the fuck they are. So it's funny, and in this case they'll they'll be saying someone else and you won't know. But still, even regardless of that, with the barrier of uh, Japanese and uh, American uh, pop culture, I thought it was pretty fucking funny. I haven't read the second one yet, but I liked it. The God's Lie uh, was amazing. I highly recommend it. It's a one-shot. We're getting into my one-shots here. A one-shot, very, very fucking good. Uh, people say it's sad. I don't think it's sad at all. I think it's a little depressing just with the situation, but it has a happy ending. So I would highly recommend it because it's a really good read. Five centimeters per second. I watched the anime. Fucking beautiful. One of my favorite anime movies of all time. Highly recommend it. Haven't read the anime. Haven't read the anime. Haven't read the manga. But I solely got it because the anime was so good. And what I do when I really like anime, I buy the manga because I want to support the creator. Uh, Girl on the Shore, if you can tell. <laughs> shrink wrap, so I never read it. And this is Inio Asano again. One of the works that probably the reason why I haven't read it is because um, people say it's not that good. Uh, Socrates in Love, a recommendation by Lythus. And I haven't gotten around to reading it. Uh, Voices of a Distant Star, again, I haven't read it. There, There's uh, a couple things in here that I haven't read, and it pains me, but um, yeah, there's some things in my collection I haven't read. But mostly, 80% of my collection is read, so I'm, I'm a little happy about that. Giganto Maxia, this is the, my only Kentaro Mura work. You know, his famous work being Berserk, which I, I will have next year with the the deluxe editions coming out. Very, very excited for those. But Giganto Maxia was actually fucking amazing. The art was magnificent. It's fucking Kentaro Mura, after all. But I, I really like the story. I really like the characters. And I think it's a really, really, really fucking good one-shot. Highly recommend it. Uh, there's a lot of um, <sighs> deeper meanings. And I love that. When things aren't... Things make you think. I, ma I made a video about this, but I took it down because that was when I had a bunch of strikes from Shueisha. Okay, over here right next to it, we have Velveteen and Mandela. Ridiculous and fucking crazy. Um, this is is in the same vein as Lychee Light Club, where they're fucking just crazy. Batshit crazy. This is batshit crazy. But it was fucking fun. And um, don't when I was reading it, I was trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Don't. Because you're not going to be able to know what the fuck is going on. Because these characters are just insane. It's literally just about two insane girls. That's it. It's two insane girls living in a fucked up world. Fucked up um, post-apocalyptic world. Dystopia. It's really fucking weird. But I would highly recommend it. Because it is. <laughs> Garden of Words haven't read it yet. But I've heard a lot of great things about the anime. Uh, Nichijo. This is a story... Uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure everyone knows about Nichi Joe now, but um, I, I didn't particularly find it that funny. I've read both of them, and I don't know. It was pretty funny, but I don't know if it's it's for me. Maybe I have to try another one, but 
usually if it's not for you within the first couple of volumes, it's just not for you and you move on. But hopefully it is because I actually really want to like Four Comas and I guess I didn't like that one. I really like Pop Team Emba because this is like more in the vein of like South Park and this is more in the vein of, um, I don't know. I don't know what I could compare it to. It's like cutesy funny. Haven't you heard of Sakamoto? Really fucking funny. Um, I believe this is only four volumes. I need to get it eventually. Very, very funny um, comedy series about a dude that's fucking perfect. Orange the Complete Collection. I read this a while back. Uh, there's two, I believe. You have the Complete Collection, Volume 1 and 2. They're three-in-one omnibuses, I believe. And if you collect those two, you have the whole story. I really enjoyed it. It's a story about a, a group of people that are trying to save their friend, essentially. And it was really good when I read it a couple years ago, and I haven't read it since, but I'd recommend it if you like a love story slash mystery, in a sense. Uh, Genshiken, 1 to 9. I recently picked this up, and I haven't read it yet, but I've heard a lot of great things about it, and I'm really happy I could get them in this Del Rey out of print. So, I think I took a long time talking about that. So, let's get on to the next one. Alright guys, so moving behind the shelf, we have pretty much all my Viz Sigs. I tried to put them all on this shelf. I used to have more, but I got rid of like Tokyo Ghoul and other Viz Signature titles that I wasn't a fan of anymore. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get on into it. So first we have Doro Hidoro 1-7. I would like to have more of Doro Hidoro, it's just they're very, very expensive. Each volume on Amazon runs you like 11 to $13, and even on Right Stuff... They go for like 10 bucks, so I'm trying to wait for a sale on them, but there hasn't been a sale on them in like forever. Like I've been waiting for just a regular Viz sale where they have them on right stuff, maybe going for like $7, pick them up then, but no luck. Anyway, Doro Hidoro is a very crazy and unique series. Think of like, I made a video on it again. Think of uh, Harry Potter meets Harry Potter on acid, essentially, about magicians and there's a mystery involved and... All these powers are crazy, the artwork's insane, really gruesome, and uh, there, there is a lot of um, mature content, so if you're not into that, again, if you're not into that, you're probably not going to be into my, my um, one of my personal favorites, I think people overlook this series because they try to, don't get me wrong, I am one of those p people that really like um, uh, stories with uh, deeper meanings, layers on layers of... Um, of ideology and uh, moral values and dilemmas and you know philosophy in a sense a uh, deeper thinking a story that really makes you think this isn't one of them and you have to be able to to really separate the two you you have to know that this series i'm not going to get that you come in knowing that that's not what you're getting you're not getting a, a thoughtful series you're getting a series with a bunch of action and a bunch of gruesome and violent fight scenes, which sometimes you just want. It's just over the top, and it's crazy. I love the eugenics aspect. I love the science aspect. It's People say like it's fake science, it's pseudoscience, but this is a fake world. Everything here is fake. So who cares if the science is exploited or exaggerated because that is the science of this world. And who are you to call it fake when that is this world this world in itself is fake so anything in a fake world is real because they are they are able to dictate what's real or not but anyway I, this is one of my favorite series um i'm missing volume 19 and volume 10 but i'm gonna be buying them when this series comes back from hiatus because we are barely getting volume 21 next year i believe and it's been gone for like two years so yeah, I really love this series. Inu Yashiki, this is the creator of Gantz. This is another series that... This is actually a series that has a lot of uh, moral implications and uh, dilemmas and whatnot. Uh, characters finding their own. A coming a coming of age story for one, which is uh, the, the two main characters are a boy and an old man where they're hit by a meteor essentially and uh, they are uh, killed but essentially brought back to life by aliens but they're like robots essentially and the boy goes on to do nefarious things you know he he becomes addicted with power he's like well he's just become like the most powerful person on earth so he's like well i'm gonna do whatever i want because i'm essentially god and the old man has a lot of regrets in his life and he's like trying to be the hero because he at this point in life he's felt like he's helpless and worthless and now he's just given a chance to do 
do more good than he's ever thought he would be able to do. Really great series. Um, I think it's 10 volumes long, and I've been, I haven't been buying them because they're pretty expensive again. I need to wait for a sale. Uh, Ultraman volumes 1 to 4. Um, I dropped this series, only read like two volumes, but, so I can't really say more, more about it. It's like a typical, um, it's like a reboot of the Ultraman series, you know, fighting in mechs. So let's see, like, think of like Iron Man, but it, it, it was pretty good. I don't know. I can't really say anything about it. I don't want to give a false opinion when my opinion is based on like not not a lot i can't give a proper opinion on this so i'm not going to talk about it a golden kamoi i really really fucking love this series i need to buy more actually i'm caught up except i'm missing volume six i don't know why i didn't order that but it's a really great series i really like the setting people call it a um a cooking manga because there's a lot of cooking in it and it does deal with like a, a certain tribe within Japan, and it shows a lot of like their culture, what they eat, how they eat, how they hunt. It's a great story, and I, I really enjoy it. So I'd highly recommend that. Silver Spoon, Volume 1. It was in the corner, in the crevice. Really like this. It, it's by the creator of um, Fullmetal Alchemist and Heroic Legend Arsalan. Only problem is they're very expensive, so that's why I haven't bought more. Um, really good. I'd recommend reading it online because you'd be surprised. You'd think, like, it's a story of essentially about a kid who's going to a high school that focuses on uh, farming and, like, farming technology and everything to do with farming. E essentially, everyone there is going to take over a farm or make um, become a scientist in agriculture or something, right? Um, you're like, how how can they possibly make this interesting? That's that's why I think she's one of the greatest mangakas ever because she's able to make this interesting. Just with the characters, their relationships, um, their their shortcomings and their achievements, and it's it's just great. It's such a great story. Over here we have uh, I'll give it my all tomorrow. A very um, sad and depressing series, but also uplifting series about failure in a sense. Really, really good. Uh, I liked it, but it's not for everyone. I would recommend reading it online. I need to do a video on this. And then over here we have series that I dropped, so Gangsta, Black Lagoon, 20th Century Boys, because I have, again, the Perfect Editions, and Coliseum. These aren't dropped, I would say these are in limbo. Like, eventually I'll get to it, but I don't know when. I really, like, Gangsta and Black Lagoon are kind of, like, the same in itself. Like, action, um, exaggerated fighting, and whatnot. And so is Coliseum. They're all essentially, like, these are all pretty much, like, the same, except 20th Century Boys. But they're pretty much the same thing, just done differently. And I like them, but they're just not on my priority list. So yeah, that's this shelf. Bunch of sig, sig uh, signature titles. So yeah, let's move on to the next one, guys. Alright guys, moving down here, we have my sports manga shelf, which I don't have that much of, but hopefully in the future, the next time I make this video, there'll be a lot more, but let's get into it. So first we have Hikaru no Go, a series about Go, if you don't know, it's like Chinese chess, I guess. It's really good, it's just the ending is leaves you with a bad taste in your mouth because it was cancelled, I believe. But I really, really enjoy the series, I just... It leaves you with that that taste that there could have been so much more, and this was just a shit way to end the series. But let's move on. Ice Shield 21 is a series that I've been trying to get into for the past couple of years, and finally I was able to find uh, these 12 volumes on eBay for really, really cheap, and good God, is the art incredible. Again, it's Murata, so this is the same guy that draws a One Punch Man. This is fucking amazing, man. I am only 12 volumes in, and it's already, you know, fucking pulled me in. It's one of the greatest uh, sports shonens, for sure. I still believe Slam Dunk is better, but that is because I've only read one-third of the series. I don't know yet, but it's been so great. And very funny, very action-packed, and the main character is really, really awesome. Highly recommend it. I have more coming in. Hopefully, next time um, I do a video like this, a manga collection, I'll have all of Ice Shield 21. Next, we have one of my favorite um, sports shonens at the moment. This has to be in my top five. This is Cross Game. It's a lovely story about a kid trying to... I don't want to spoil anything. But just know it's a romance. It has sports. 
and it has it, it, think of it like this is essentially like the your line april of sports shonens it's really really sad but really really heartwarming at the same time you know you just want them to get you just want them to get through it and you want them to have a happy ending so it's it's really good i highly recommend it i have five of these omnibuses there's a total of eight so pretty soon i'll have everything and then over here this just kind of deteriorates to like some random stuff so we have the heroic legend of arslan that's uh the another work by the creator of um full metal alchemist it's really good I like it. I need to get more of it, but um, personally, I love I like Silver Spoon and and a Full Metal Alchemist a bit more. So I'll probably be getting Silver Spoon, and then once I catch up, I'll buy more of these. Bungo Stray Dogs. I I enjoyed it. They're just a bit expensive. Can't really say much about it because I only read one one uh, volume, but it was pretty good. Then we have Drifters. This is from the creator of Helsing. Amazing. I absolutely love it. I love the the whole history aspect. Essentially, they get a bunch of history uh people that are famous in history and they throw them into a manga series and they have to fight each other it's it's fucking awesome get a bunch of um you know history legends and throw them into a battle royale that's essentially what it is then we have battlefront blood black paid battlefront I, I enjoyed it this is from the creator of trigun i have uh volumes one to five and seven volume six is like forty dollars and uh the rest of the series is pretty in print a couple of these are out of print, but I've enjoyed it and I want to collect it simply because it's out of print and, and I honestly liked it a bit. Right there in the darkness, we have Parasite Volume 1. I really, really enjoyed Parasite. I loved the anime. I thought the anime was really good. It was a different take on it. And I got the manga. I read the manga online simply because I love the anime so much. And now I just need to collect the manga because it, it's a great series. So yeah, that was this shelf, guys. Let's go ahead and uh, see what's behind it. So down here we have, behind there, we have a series that is dear to my heart. My favorite shonen of all time. You guys all know this, so let's show it. So 1 to 22 there, and uh, 23 to 32 there of Hunter x Hunter. I could sit here and talk to talk about Hunter x Hunter for hours. I'm actually currently rereading the series. This is the series that started this channel. This is the first manga that I ever collected. This is the first manga that I ever caught up with. This is the first manga that... I probably have read... This is the first manga I've probably read three times over. It's a series that I used to pride myself on, you know, knowing the in and, in and outs of all the idiosyncrasies with... Um, as of lately, I've forgotten most of what I used to know. I could name all of the Phantom Troop off the back of my hand. Now I can probably name four or five of them. Hunter x Hunter is my favorite shonen of all time. It will always be so. The story of Gong and Killua on a journey to find his father and uh, meeting tons of people along the way growing that's what I love about this series is it teaches you that you must always be growing and getting stronger because life doesn't stand still you know life keeps going life keeps evolving people keep getting stronger your foes your foe is going to be stronger the next time around you know and this series captures that perfectly so let's move on <laughs> So, Law of Ueki, we have 1 to 12 right there. This is a really, really fun series. Uh, Subasa Fukuchi has a new manga that I think is even better than this, honestly. It's about, essentially, kind of about time travel in a way. Uh, the main character's power, at least. Uh, I believe he, he drew a lot from this. Uh, Law of Ueki was a learning opportunity for him. And then everything he learned from this series, you know, the 16 volumes he had out, he implemented that into his new story, which is really, really fucking good. And if we ever get an English release for that, I am going to be making like 10 videos. Every video that I'll make, if we get an English release for that, I'll be fucking shouting it out and getting people to read it. But uh, I'll leave it right here on the side. That is the manga. Really, really fucking good. I don't, I'm assuming, I think it's still ongoing. I don't know what publisher, who, what magazine is in, because I, I don't believe it's in Shonen Jump. I'll figure that out, put it on the side, but highly recommend Law of Yuek. It's really fun. It's a GOG manga, but it's honestly one of the best tournament arcs in all of Shonen. We have Get Packers uh, 1 to 20. There's a few missing in between. Sorry for the glare there. Uh, I've only read a couple volumes of it, so I'm not going to say much about it. Let's just skim over. This is one of the 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 uh, manga in my collection that I really don't know much about, haven't read much about. I bought it on eBay a while ago, and I really don't want to... I've tried to get rid of it, I've tried to sell it. People don't want to buy it, so I'm like, alright, at this point, I'm just like, alright, I'm going to read it then. So we have Kikayashi 1 to 10. 
Higashi is one of my personal favorites. I really, really enjoy it. I think it's amazing. I think the the characters, uh, the chemistry between the, our two our two leads are insane. I think the character progression of our main lead is incredible. Uh, this is really, honestly, the first ten volumes of Kikayashi is like really slow, but then it starts picking off, picking up from like volumes eight to ten. Something crazy happens that really just puts our our main character into overdrive of like he needs to get stronger, he needs to grow, and he grows so much in this series. And by the end of the series, he's like a whole different person with a whole different set of ideals, and it's it's awesome. Honestly, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's it's a pretty good one. Uh, Kikayashi, one of my favorites. I need to get more of it. It's just a lot of money because I think there's a total of 37 volumes and I only have 10. So yeah, maybe one day I'll pick some up off rice stuff, uh, do a haul next year. Next year for sure. That'll be, um, remind me guys, I need to buy more of this. So yeah, that was it. Let's move on to the next shelf. Let's move on to the final bookshelf of my manga collection. This video has been insanely long, so I'm not going to not gonna talk any more than I need to. Let's get into it. So right here, we have uh, my, one of my favorite mangas of all time, if not my favorite. Uh, for sure, my favorite series of all time. This is Vagabond. You don't already know. It's a story about a samurai um, trying to find his place in the world, but it's not really about a samurai. It's more about... Our main character finding out what strength really is, is strength being able to cut down a hundred men or being able to stop a hundred men from ever even picking up a sword. Shit like that. It's very, very philosophical. I love it. I highly recommend it. These are in, are out of print. That is why I don't have the rest of Vagabond because they're, it's, it's pretty hard to find them for a decent price. And they've been out of stock and right stuff for a while now. But for sure, I will have Vagabond complete by next year. So we have like 1 to 22 right there. Really, really nice. I'm so, so very happy with these because the artwork is amazing on these covers. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on. I've already said so much about Vagabond. Uh, we have Real. This is his other work. Uh, other than this, he also has Slam Dunk. I love Slam Dunk and I need to have it in my collection. But I've read it like two times over online. So I'm kind of a little, you know, unmotivated to buy it. But we have a Real 1 to 6. I haven't read any of it yet, but it is on hiatus. So I'm not really in a hurry. Then we have one of my other favorite mangas of all time, Yoshihiro Tatsumi. This is the, the godfather of um, alternative manga. I'm sorry about the lighting there, but this is in all of his works. I'm um, still missing quite a few, but really, really enjoyed this. And I highly recommend reading A Drifting Life. It is amazing, and I think everyone should have this in their manga collection because it just it shows you the, the journey of a mangaka who goes on to change the landscape. This is some manga history right here. Jiro Taniguchi, uh, we have the Times of Bochchan right there. This is actually canceled in the U.S., so we don't have the the rest of them. There's ten volumes in total, but they only printed four here. And then I have A Distant Neighborhood. Really, really good story. Uh, amazing. It's a story about, essentially, a guy going back in time and realizing um, what he cherishes. Because he's like 30-something he's like or 40, and then he goes back to his 13-year-old body, and he realizes what, what's really important in life. So, truly, really, really good stuff. I love Jiro Taniguchi. I need to get more of his stuff. So, let's move down here. We have Osama Tezuka. This is the godfather of manga. I don't have much. I have uh, M3 and uh, the Book of Human Insects. I haven't read any of these. I haven't started Buddha. I haven't started Messes of Adolf because I have part two and not part one. Part one is insanely out of print. Um, I have read these two over here. The Osama Tezuka story. Uh, Dororo and I uh, haven't read this stuff right here because I need part 2 for this and I'd like to read uh, Princess Knight before I read Twin Knights which I think is a sequel but I love me some Osama Tezuka he is a mastermind he is the godfather of manga and just write some great stuff I have read Astro Boy it's really good I need to get more of it but uh, very very great stuff Osama Tezuka goes without saying he is uh, brilliant I don't think he's my favorite manga of all time, but obviously I haven't really read much of his. I, I have stuff, I just haven't been feeling like reading it. We have Lupin the Third. This manga is insanely out of print. It is ridiculously expensive, and I'm trying to collect it and read it all. Uh, I haven't started reading it yet, simply because I only have volumes 1 to 5, and I'd like to get at least volumes 6 and 8, so I can read uh, 1 to 10. I, I don't have this. Oh, actually, 
If I get 6 and 8, I can read out 1 to 11, and then I just have to buy the rest. But yeah, insanely expensive stuff here, guys. This is like my one of my gems of the collection. Lone Wolf and Cub. It's a little in the shadows there, but these are the pocket editions. Um, I bought these a while back, and they're extremely small. I didn't know they were this small when I bought them on eBay, but I got it for really cheap. And yeah, Lone Wolf and Cub's a really, really great story. Uh, I've only read what I have here, so I can't say much about it. People regard this as like their favorite manga of all time. I think it's really good. The art's great. Uh, very, very dated, but it's, it's still amazing. I, I just, I think that art's incredible. But it's a, it's a great story of a man and his child wandering the the um, world of Japan during, you know, all the samurais and the vagabonds and shit. So yeah, really, really great stuff, guys. Uh, right there and right there. So let's move on to the next one. The last shelf down here. Some greatness going to be down there. Uh, there's some stuff that I'm not going to show because uh, I, I really don't have it nicely organized. But I do have uh, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind and uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. I don't think I've shown those. But let's move down here. Get on my knees. Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga is fucking amazing. It is for sure in my top 10 manga of all time. These hardcover editions are beautiful. I would highly recommend getting these. They're insane. They're not very expensive because they're two in ones hardcover and they range for from like anywhere from thirteen to sixteen dollars. I would say get this. I'm missing volume ten. Not in a hurry because I'm not rereading the series. I think I'm gonna reread it next month and then I'll, I'll definitely buy that tenth volume. But I highly recommend it, especially if you like Vikings and if you like Vagabond. It's like the the Viking Vagabond in a way. Planet Tess. This is from the same creator. I fucking absolutely love this story. One of my favorite mangas of all time. It is for sure in my top 10 list. I love Planetess. It's a story that's wrapped up in four volumes. I believe these are sadly now out of print. But it was an amazing tale of a boy. and Essentially like a, a space odyssey in a way. He starts as a, a trash collector whose dream is to buy his own ship. And then he kind of just finds out what, what, uh, what he really cherishes in life falls in love, and there's other side characters who have really, really great uh, side stories as well. Highly recommend it. It's a great story. I wish uh, Black, uh, Black, Dark Horse, I said Black Horse, Dark Horse would uh, reprint it. Then we have uh, Gundam The Origin. We have like volumes 1 to 5, and then an assortment of numbers. Uh, can't really see it there. But yeah, uh, I need to finish collecting these because I don't want them to go out of print. Sadly, some of them, I did get them used, so like the spines right here are bad, but most of them are in really good condition. I really, really enjoy this series. It is one of the greatest mangas, physically at least. Like, This is probably the most high-quality manga ever made here in the U.S. at least. It's amazing. The story is great. I've only read up to Volume 5, but it, it's amazing, and I need to buy the rest. Hopefully by next my next manga collection, I'll have them, and I'd highly recommend getting them because I do believe they're going to go out of print. And then right here we have uh, the Captain Harlock... The classic collection, I really, really enjoy these. I'm so happy that that uh, Seven Seas is doing this. I had fun with this. It's a little dated, but it was still pretty good. I can't wait to get the next one, and I'm actually getting Devil Man. That's the one I'm really excited for. Should be getting here any day now. So yeah, and then over here, like it's like a mess, so I don't, don't really want to show it because I was moving stuff around. But Nausicaa and Neon Genesis Evangelion. Neon Genesis Evangelion, honestly, I haven't finished it yet. I was like halfway through and then I don't know why I stopped for some reason. So I need to finish that and Nausicaa, I haven't touched it yet. But one of these days. I bought it because it was extremely cheap. It was like 30 bucks on Amazon. I was like, I'll get it now and I think now it's risen to 60 But one day I will read this. So that was everything, guys. We saw everything. This video is close to an hour, I think. God damn. I'm not doing another one of these till next year. Whew. And I hope this video turns out well. And if you actually stayed and watched all of it, comment down below and tell me that you did. And um, pat on the back. You are a true supporter. And I can't believe you just listened to me talk about all this fucking manga. I don't know how much manga this is, but I'll go ahead and count it up. And uh, leave it in the title. So yeah, guys, before we let you go, even though I guess this video has been way too long, I should probably cut it short. Out of all of my collection, if I, if you could only read a few, 
I would definitely say Naoki Urasawa over there. Either 20th Century Boys or Monster. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer or Spirit Circle. Vagabond. Vinland Saga and Planetess. And Hunter x Hunter. So if you could only choose a few out of all of these. If I had to get rid of everything and only keep a handful of series, those are the series I would. You guys have a great day. Toaster Cat out. New manga collection video next year. Later, guys.